Let's first talk about uh, the principal quantum number. Or N. So N relates the energy of a particular shell of electrons. All right, we have to remember electrons are, you know, held around the nucleus because of the protons. The positive negative charge attraction or Coulombic attraction you know, keeps the electrons in orbit, if you will. Right, much like, I suppose, us and the sun and the galaxy, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, so there's this opposite attractive force, this Coulombic attraction, that's keeping the electrons hanging out around the nucleus. Um, but realize that electrons are negatively charged. So there's also this repulsive feature that is, is going on. So, electrons are negative and if, you know, they are all surrounding the nucleus They are repelling, or maybe the better way to put that, they are being repelled by one another. So we separate them. by the quantum numbers. First is energy or energy separation. So that's the idea with with the principal quantum number is is that these electrons have different energetics and we can see that in terms of you know, maybe a better visual would be here where we have a hydrogen lamp on the left and where we have that hydrogen lamp basically um, on, right? Realize that this is going back to that notion of cathode rays. Oops. Sorry, getting ahead of myself here. 
So if we look at our image on the right, we have a number of tubes that are giving off light, right? These are neon tubes, right? Just like we would see down town, right? Um, signs that, you know, attract our attention. And those are just gases that are being, you know, excited um, with electrical charge or energy. But we can take that over to the left now and look at now the hydrogen lamp. And so we're allowing that light to be focused through a prism. Um, and then we have separation as a result of the prism. And so what we find is that there are different bands of light depending on what type of element you're really talking about. And that's looking at emission spectra. So if we go down below, you know, we have, you know, the emission spectra here for um, our helium. You know, we have barium as well. Um, there are other examples in the text. But realize that they're not the same, that they, they're different. It's almost like a fingerprint um, for atoms um, as far as their emission spectra. Because we're really talking now about, you know, different energetics of the electrons that are there. We're exciting these electrons. Um, and then as a result, they're, re they're, re they're relaxing back down. And, and, and that's where we're going with this notion of, of emission spectra and this idea of, of N, the principal quantum number. So now we get into the Schrodinger equation. Um, and the Schrodinger equation is actually a, f a very complex uh, equation. Um, but we are going to be very specific with a particular element. Um, and we're going to be specific to the hydrogen atom. The Schrodinger equation is actually different for all the atoms and elements that are out there. Um, there's a lot more to it in terms of protons and, and quantum numbers, um, size, um, mass, etc. So... We're going to be very simple with it and just really talk about this particular expression. And so here we have the energy of the electron. Right? And that would be the, 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 basically the principle quantum level energy. We have a constant, which is the negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative uh, 18th joules. And then we have N, which again is that principal quantum number. So this actually relates now this idea of a quantum number to an actual ener energetic orbit. So we can imagine maybe an, an element looking like this. For instance, we could have maybe here the nucleus and then we could have, you know, out from it, different energy levels. And just using the equation that we have above, we could actually figure out what those energies are. Right, we have 
n, if n is 1, 2, 3, and 4, we can then substitute that in for it's in within the Schrodinger equation and then solve for our energetics. And so what we find is, is that we get less and less negative. Remember, this is a Coulombic attraction, right? This is an energy um, that's, that's you know, um, given off in a sense of, of creating that energetic attraction. Um, it's also then an energy that has to be added if we want to break that energetic um, attraction. But we're going from 10 to the negative 18th, then slowly up through 10 to the 19th <coughs> in terms of our joules. So we can have different energies here for electrons that are surrounding um, an element. So we have this relationship of energy and distance from you know this coulombic attraction that we just uh, talked about so the relationship that we find here is really the notion of the coulombic attraction you know that decreases with distance so we could say that you know this is really rough that energy is related to you know q1 times q2 over r squared where q1 is equal to you know charge particle one and q2 is equal to the charge of particle two and then r is the distance that separates Q1 and Q2. So this is really the notion of magnets and um, and all that. That you know, if you put a positive end of a magnet towards another positive end end of another magnet, they repel it one another. That's because that energy is positive, right? Q1 and Q2 are both positive. And in fact, as you got those two positive ends of a magnet closer together you would feel that repulsive force even even more. I'm sure we've all done this as a kid, um, that you just take two positive ends towards a magnet, they repel one another. You take two negative ends of a magnet, they also repel one another, again, because a negative times a negative would then be a positive energy, in according to this like um, very general Coulombic attractive equation that we see here. So... If we take the plus to the minus, however, right, we realize that all of a sudden they snap together, right? And and that's a distance thing as well. Just like as we get closer and closer together with the positive positive or negative negative, it's harder and harder to put those two ends together. As soon as we take the negative and the positive end and we get them close together, what all of a sudden we f see, boom, snap. Right, and that's that uh, attractive force. That's a negative, right, idea. Right, all of a sudden it just ha actually happens. So what we find over to the top here is just different s strengths, right? That um, you know takes 
a lot of energy to get an electron out of the first level if it's in the first level and it just takes you know less energy um and 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 that's just a distance idea that the distance is greater um from the positive well here we have our distance is much closer to the positive Right, as far as that nucleus, right, that, that positive um, core that we have. And that attractive force coming from the idea that Q1 is an electron and is negative in terms of its charge, and Q2 is now a proton and is now positive charge not now but they that's that's what they are and that's what we find in in the nucleus right is the proton so that means we can look at now electrons in terms of a, really a position and so it means you know the principle quantum number um, really develops the idea of energetic shells. That surround the nucleus And basically, whose energy um, is related to how far away from the nucleus they are. Um, so that means we can look at changes in principal quantum numbers. And, you know, that's... the idea of emission spectra and yes fireworks with the ooze and and and, and the ahs right um the pretty lights so we can think about the Schrodinger equation a little bit differently then. To something that looks like this and this is actually what we tend to see quite often 
in the representation. So we're looking at electronic transfers. They're you know going from one energy level to another energy level, where you have you know n final would be you know the final principal quantum level or quantum uh, number and then you know an initial or an i i'm sorry would be the initial or level so it's it's looking at like a transition you know so to speak right so um as you know an example here we could kind of look at how we were envisioning um an element with these electrons in terms of a uh, Whoops. In terms of a model. So here what we see are different quantum numbers. N is five, four, three, two, and then one all the way down to the bottom, right? And so notice that N is equal to one is you know, kind of held the closest um, in terms of the nucleus, and we can see the nucleus right, which is that ball at, ball at the bottom. And as we go further out, right, we have different energetic shells, if you will, principal levels, but they get further and, and further out. And what this is really showing here, this emission spectra Bohr model is showing us, is like if we talk about an electron, say, way out to the left here, and it's in this fifth level, and it's going to lose energy in the sense of, well, it's going to go down in energy. It's going to go from a higher level to a lower level, all the way to the n is equal to 2. And as a result of that, we actually have this type of light that actually occurs. We've talked about light earlier in terms of the visible spectrum. right? Remember that we were at blue-violet, which is 434 nanometers. Um, that was actually higher energy compared to something of more the red spectrum, which we see on the far, far, far right of 657. Notice that electron now is in the bottom right-hand corner and going not from the fifth level to the second level, but actually going from the third level to the second level. So these are like electronic transitions, meaning that because these electrons are held in certain orbits or certain energy levels around the nucleus, I can add energy to it, to the element, to the atom, and cause those electrons to be excited and go up to higher levels. But then that can also, will also cause relaxation, meaning those electrons will relax down to a lower energy level. And so that's the notion with this idea of emission uh, spectra. So we can add energy and excite the electrons, then relax and give off energy.
and that is light. And that's the idea of emission spectroscopy or emission spectra or fireworks in general, general is that um, we can add energy and excite electrons. Electrons then relax and give off energy, right? They give off this notion of light. And that's, that's, that's the whole idea with fireworks, right? That's the ooh and the ah, right? So let's, let's maybe look at that pictorially. Well, at least, you know, in a cartoon representation here where here we have our principal quantum numbers, right? We have our nucleus down below so we have n is equal to one two three and four and we have an electron here it's an example okay so we just have one electron um and i'm representing this i know this might be new for us we'll get used to this idea of of the fish hook I'll come back to this um, later in this lecture um, but this is one way to represent um, I'm, I'm an electron and we have basically an excitement or an excitation that occurs. Right? The firework explodes, right? There's energy actually being given to the electron. And so that produces an excitation to occur. So I'm going to draw the same energy levels roughly that we saw before. But now our electron is at the very top. So that excitation promoted the electron up to the very top or the fourth level um, that we have uh, represented here. This is just like, you know, <laughs> going get an espresso or coffee or whatever, right? You get excited, right? Because you drink coffee or you drink espresso. I love iced Americanos. And all of a sudden, I have a lot of energy, right? Because I'm excited. But what happens is then there's the drop, right? You eventually are going to relax or you're going to crash, right? And, and the same thing happens with electrons. They actually then um, cool down or they then lose energy. And so this is the relaxation, where energy is released to the surroundings. And guess what that is? That's light. That's the U and the ah, right? Because as we come back to our energy levels, we might now find our electron back down at the bottom. So it went from this higher energy level back down to the lower energy level 
and it relaxed. Now realize that we have, you know, an energy kind of gap that's actually um, occurring here. That if we look at where we began, meaning I was here initially, that was my initial quantum level, and I came all the way down to N final, right? This energy gap is the energy for the electronic transition. And what is that electronic transition related to? Well, yes, the change in energy that we just see, or just see now, but it's also related to wavelength and frequency. And that's where our light comes from that's where our color of fire works comes from. So let's do um, an example of this process as far as, you know, let's actually calculate an energetic transfer um, or transition and then relate it to an actual wavelength <coughs> of, of light that's being actually um, emitted. So here's our question. We have an electron in the hydrogen atom relaxes from the n is equal to 3 level to the n is equal to 2 level. What is the change in energy corresponding to this transition? And then what is also the wavelength of the light emitted? So we have two different pieces to this um, as far as uh, change in energy for this transition. So we can call that um, a, um, and then what is the wavelength of light emitted? We can call that B. Um, important thing in terms of terms is this idea of N. And so when we see this idea of terms and N, we really are always looking at this idea of the Schrodinger, you know, equation.
And so here we have our n final being 2 and our n initial being 3. Right, because that is the transition that we're actually looking at. So in terms of, you know, maybe thinking about that diagram before, we have our three levels of N, and our electron is in the third level. And then it's going to relax to the second level. We have an energy change here that's occurring, where here would be, you could say, our energy initial or N initial, and here is our energy final or N final. And as a result, that's where our energy of the photon comes from. The energy of the photon here, you know, is that equal and opposite relationship that the energy of the electron transition is equal to the energy of that photon. As long as we change, you know, the sign, it's got to be a positive energy for that for that photon. So it's just that they're they're related to to one another. You know, as far as system and surroundings. Remember the first law of thermodynamics. Energy flows It is, you know, neither created nor destroyed. You know, it is constant. So, so that's how we have to, we have to treat this question in, in the sense of different parts. Or part one. Or part A is looking at the energy of the electronic transition. And then our part B is looking at the photon of light. So if we look at what we have... You know, we have everything to solve for the electronic transition. Our N uh, final was the second level. Our N initial was the third level. And if we solve for that, our energy for that electronic transition, right, really this is a, a change in energy, right, going from one to another, um, is equal to negative 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So that would be part A. It's figuring out the change in energy for that electronic transition. And, and that's what we see here. 
um, just looking at the differences between the f level that the electron started in to the level that the electron eventually fell to. For part B, which is asking us now the, the wavelength. of light, we're looking at now that relationship between energy and wavelength. First we have to do, you know, that, that, sign, that sign change, meaning that um, this is energy now being given off. in terms of that energy of the photon. So that's pretty simple, right? And then we can set it up. So we have that energy being now positive, and that positive energy is equal to hc over lambda. Now plugging in our constants. Right, we can solve for, for our lambda, and uh, our lambda of the photon is then equal to 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, or 656 nanometers. And we're basically looking at red light, but that would be Part B is that photon of light. So that's the inherent relationship between this idea of excitation and relaxation as far as um, elements being able to give off um, light. We see electronic transitions all the time from neon signs to campfires to, um, you know, the lights in our house. Um, so <clears throat> here looking at the, the mathematics involved behind those types of electronic transitions.